yes people yes people welcome to extended thoughts now a very interesting very short topic and i'm gonna label this probably giant diaspora now guys this is pre-recorded so there may be some bloopers let's get into this though so you can see an image of the current queen of england looking at a rather tall skeletal object encased in glass now that person is charles byrne now charles byrne was known as the irish giant and interestingly about ireland there's a place in northern ireland called the giant causeway and many folklores have suggested that these stones were placed there by giants trying to go to and fro from ireland to scotland and then obviously there's another narrative of it being more of a scientific conundrum but either either way folklore or science it is what it is but leaving that to one side for a minute it's been suggested that charles Byrne, he was born in 1761 he was eight foot two eight foot four and in some other places they say he was seven foot seven so there's a bit of ambiguity in regards to his actual height but nevertheless between let's just call it let's just go for eight foot two let's just go in the middle so not eight foot four not seven foot seven let's just say eight foot two now guys a quick question when we think of giants in the scripture context what size do we think a giant is in a scripture context so you know we have king og or king og yeah he was a giant he was the remnant of giants and then we have goliath who was a giant so we have pre-flood giants which were known as titans and then you have post-flood giants that were known as giants and they varied in different sizes in fact some were quite uh, very tall extremely tall to the extent that the Israelites felt like they were grasshoppers. And then you had different variations of sizes of giants. But nevertheless, they were still termed giants. So that's interesting. We've got the Queen uh, of England looking at a giant encased in glass whose name is Charles Byrne, a.k.a. the Irish giant. Okay. Now... I'm not going to read the thing that's at the top. Actually, no, I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll read it. So it says, but this is just a, a, a book called The Story of the Irish Race. Now it says, due to their friendship, Herman gave the Canaanite chiefs wives of his own people. Hey, we're going to get into this. We're going to get into this when I return by the most highest grace. But I'll leave you to read the footnotes on the other one. And I'm just going to speak over it. So anyway, um, this guy here is called Angus McSkill and he was a Scottish born Canadian giant and he was recorded in the 1981 edition of the Guinness Book of World Records stated he was the strongest man who ever lived the tallest non-pathological giant in recorded history largest true giant to have ever lived and the man with the largest chest measurement of any non-obese man interesting right and i think that handprint might be slightly over exaggerated but this guy was extremely tall extremely tall now again guys when you think of a giant how tall do you think of david and that infamous goliath to be how tall was goliath in your brain now some of us have exaggerated a point due to sensationalism due to probably hollywood due to probably churchianity, due to probably campian, due to whatever thing you've been a part of, innit? But, but, but in your head, based upon the scriptures, how tall, how tall is that race? How tall is a race of giants in your head? Yeah? We're going to get there though. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, I leave you to read the footnotes, but I'm just going to read a little snapshot from that footnote. The last remaining Canaanites in Asia Minor. I think you should understand where Asia Minor is. But the last remaining Canaanites in Asia Minor disappeared mysteriously from the area. A remnant of the Canaanites and 
some other nations journeyed out of this area to the northwest eventually arriving in scotland very interesting all right let's continue let's advance now remember i was asking you those questions those rhetorical questions of how tall is a giant how tall is a giant now allegedly shaquille o'neal is not seven foot one apparently shaquille o'neal is only six foot eleven allegedly according to one of his own affidavits he actually said he's only he's not even seven foot he's six eleven apparently that's what he said i don't know but anyway i've got an image there for you to see of kevin hart now kevin hart by today's standards is quite small he's only five foot two um, Shaquille O'Neal, all right, let's give him the seven foot one, even though he says he's not seven foot one. But well, let's just say he's seven foot one. Then we knew we, we, we know that Israel was tall anyway, to an extent. We know that when David went to verse Goliath, we know that we read that Saul was head and shoulders above most of the men of Israel. So, so Saul was a very tall guy in comparison to the rest of the Israelites. Yes, we did have some tall people amongst us and among us. However, Goliath was just humongous. So, there's Kevin Hart. Nice little smile. Uh, there's Shaquille O'Neal. Nice little tie. And then you have somebody else. I forgot his name. And he's about seven foot six. Yeah. Then you have somebody more interesting than the seven foot six. And his name is Wadlow. Now, Wadlow was eight foot 11 and he was still growing there was no signs that he had stopped growing and the interesting thing about Wadlow is unfortunately he died at only 22 years old 22 years old and his voice could send shockwaves metaphorically speaking he had a very deep <laughs> deep voice you know what I'm saying so anyway he was about eight foot 11 um interesting story about wadlow i'm gonna share some videos of wadlow and um that's pretty much gonna be the rest of this little presentation very short very sweet probably might um jump in towards it and then end off but i just wanted you to see you know come out of disneyland and la la land and maryland and chicken land and dog land and just think a little bit objectively when we're talking about goliaths and when we're talking about giants and when we're talking about things of these affairs yeah eight foot eleven dying prematurely that would be considered a giant you know people that would be considered a giant and not only that you had maximinius frax who was a caesar of rome and he was eight foot six and his hand was massive and he used to apparently allegedly run with the horses so when we start thinking about that Goliath was only about nine foot something not only <laughs> he was about nine foot something people have even said 10 foot something and OG of Og was about 12 foot something so when we consider all of these things um hopefully 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 some alarm bells are ringing yeah and if the alarm bells aren't ringing then it is what it is but here it's just a little comparison so Goliath is nine foot six you want to stretch it out stretch Armstrong let's put him at ten foot something yeah but I just want you to see what we're looking at in reality all right guys so let's continue <laughs> now this is why I always say that names are like GPS but we've been put in a spell with words you know many people don't understand words many people are scared of words and many people are scared to even inquire now listen, I want to say something from the offset, yeah? You have nations that are inherently against the Most High based upon their nation, but you can have individuals, notice what I'm saying, you know? I don't want people going a bit too crazy and all religious -y. But you can have individuals who are striving for righteousness even in corrupt nations. And let's be honest, the Israelite nation... As set apart as it was and should have been, it became corrupt too. So if using Israel as an analogy as the head of the world and everyone else being a lesser body part per se, if the head is sick, Israel, 
then everybody else is sick as a nations and as collectives. But what I'm just trying to bring home really is don't go too far down stupid street and think that all nations or all individuals in nations are inherently evil. That's 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 not what this presentation is about. But anyway, this is this is about the diaspora of the giants. Now listen, this guy here, he's called Iga Vovkov in sky i hope i said that right now um this individual is called igor and this is why i love it you know when we start getting into words when we start decoding words when we start breaking down words when we appreciate words we can fly like birds you know what i mean listen so igor volvov kovinsky now igor Ogre or Ogor. Interesting. We know that one of the uh, giants, the Amorite giant, recorded in Deuteronomy 3 verse 11 says, For only Oji, Ogre, <laughs> the king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants. Now that word Ogre is warrior. It gets interesting. But anyway, here's some videos. I hope that you found all of this interesting. I love at the moment exploring the topic of Canaan because it's been such a mystery for a long time but when you start to peel back the onion you realize there's layers to the cake and a lot of people are going to probably start crying when they realize the mistakes that we've made myself included I want to revisit the video that I created about the sons of Noah when I say Ham, Shem and Japheth because that's off you know that's wrong in, in, in so many levels, but that was made about three, three, two years ago. So as knowledge increases, so should our perception of reality increase. But with that being said, I'm going to share three videos. Two of Wadlow to show you his life and experiences. And then the, the third video is going to be of a man with gig gigantism and it affected his voice and made his voice very, very deep. Now, I hope you found all of this interesting. Show some support and show some love by liking, even disliking, leaving a comment. And as always, people, extending thoughts. as the tallest person ever in human recorded history for whom there is irrefutable evidence. Hold up, I was gonna let the video play. But wait there, family, what 10 year old boy, boy, I just say it like a Jamaican, and what 10 year old boy do you know? Grows to six foot five, wow. Now, <laughs> sorry man, I should have let the video play. Don't, don't, don't get all emotional. Hear this though. I went to school with a man called Christian. And this boy called Christian, he was of mixed ancestry. His mom was Caucasian and his dad was a uh, Negro. And he grew exceptionally tall, you know. Like literally he was the tallest brother in school. And nobody would mess with his brother. Because he weren't just tall, but he was big and muscular and strong. And just like a boy, like a bull, like a ball. You see me? So it's interesting anyway, but yeah, imagine that though, 10 year old, 6 foot 5, looking down on you like, what going for, I mean, that's mad isn't it? Anyway, let the video play. I'm Robert Wadlow, 7 feet tall, 12 years old and I weigh 240 pounds. These boys grouped around me are, go the same grade as I am. Nearly two feet. All right, this is going to be my last interruption. Did you hear how his voice sounded? My name is you. Like proper deep and that. You know what I'm saying? Subwoofer bass. Amazing. Taller than NBA All-Star center Shaquille O'Neal is today. And the world could barely accommodate him. I had a duck to go through all doorways. No room on a bus. No room on a train. No seats. Airplane.
Wadlow's size began to take its toll. He required leg braces to walk and had little feeling in his legs and feet. Despite these difficulties, he never used a wheelchair. Wadlow became a celebrity after his 1936 U.S. tour with the Ringling Brothers Circus. In 1938, he did a promotional tour with the International Shoe Company, since 1966 called Interco. They provided him his shoes free of charge. Wadlow reached 8 foot 11.1 inches or 2.72 meters in height and weighed 490 pounds at his death at age 22. His great size and his continued growth in adulthood were due to hyperplasia of his pituitary gland, which results in an abnormally high level of human growth hormone. Well, I guess if you let me get started and tell you about Alton, I never could stop. Because Alton has a great deal of historic interest, and I know most of it. He showed no indication of an end to his growth even at the time of his death in 1940. What may be most impressive is that Wadlow stood a full 8 inches taller than the tallest living man today. When it comes to height, nobody comes close to the Alton Giant. They called him the Alton Giant. He was born on February 22, 1918, a hundred years ago. At nearly 9 feet tall, Robert Wadlow went into the record books as the world's tallest man. But he died at the age of 22, so for most of his life, he was a growing boy. Wherever he went, this was a youth YMCA trip to the World's Fair in Chicago in 1933. He couldn't help but attract crowds. And that became his job with St. Louis's International Shoe Company, traveling from town to town, shoe store to shoe store. But he did consider it a job. He considered it a full-time job. His title was field representative for international shoe. Tim Leone produced a documentary about Robert Wadlow's life in 1991. Yo, family, how did that guy get onto that airplane? How are you getting into that airplane, man? Mad. Amazing. And had interviewed those who had known him. Here in Alton, is the place where Robert was best known and really was the place that he, the only place he could just be Robert Wadlow and not the world's tallest man. True. To the people of Alton's credit, Robert was viewed and thought of as just one of the guys. He had always been bigger than everybody. He had been bigger than the teachers in grade school. He was bigger than all the students. He was bigger than every adult. He was bigger than every car. He was the biggest thing and he always had been that way. So the people here, his classmates, the teachers, the people in the church and the various civic groups that he belonged to, didn't really react adversely to him. He, Robert had always been that way, so they didn't really think of it as anything out of the ordinary. The thing about him is that for someone who was the world's largest man, a man who stood out no matter where he went, he seems remarkably to have been well-adjusted. Very true. Robert was very comfortable with who he was. You have to remember he was always in the public eye ever since he was a very young person, starting from about age nine. And so he developed a certain sense of sophistication far beyond the experience of any of his peers. And so he was pretty comfortable with who he was. Like he said one time, uh, he said people should utilize their handicaps instead of fussing about them. He said, look at me, I'm getting along all right. For Living St. Louis, I'm Jim Kirchner. Yeah, so very interesting story, and he's not the only one, but he's the one known in recorded history, but there's been many before this individual, and I've kind of put at the bottom, Giants never left, they just rebranded NBA, National Basketball Association, Circus, Freak Shows, all these different labels were given to people who were exceptionally tall, exceptionally talented, or had an exceptional mutation, so it's just interesting um, when we look at the story of Wadlow, 22 years old, you know, that tall, that that gigantic um, and he wasn't on the way to stop growing um, until his premature uh, departure. Very, very interesting. And it must be mentioned that this guy was also very up in the esoteric arena in that respect, which is interesting. A lot of these people who were exceptionally tall were exceptionally granted access to those 
places, if that makes sense. Anyway, this next one is just going to be a short clip. And it's just about uh, a person who's tall to an extent, not as tall as this guy. Well, probably not as tall as this guy, um, but his voice is very uh, powerful. So let's have a look. Una extraña malformación física generó que los gemelos Rodrigo y Javier en Guatemala nacieran con graves problemas físicos, los cuales derivaron en un incontrolable crecimiento de todo su cuerpo. Los gemelos afrontaron infinidad de extrañas enfermedades, pero Rodrigo nació con su caja torácica muy grande, por lo que falleció cuando tenía un año y medio, mientras que Javier siguió luchando por su vida, por forma desmedida, mientras que sus huesos empezaron a torcer debido a su increíble tamaño. No había un caso similar. Más cuesta problemas para Milagrosa se libró de la muerte y ahora intenta llevar una vida lo más normal posible aquí en la casa pongo la mesa quito la mesa doblo la ropa la reparto la ropa que está planchada la, la reparto ayudo mucho a mi mamá Cuida a mi abuelita. Javier mide 2 metros con 35. All right, so that's it, guys. It's going to be wrapping up. Uh, thank you for watching. What I want you to do, though, is a bit of homework, yeah? I want you to just forget everything you think you know because we don't really know a lot. We're still learning, unlearning, relearning. And if you've come across someone who acts like they know it all, brethren, they don't know nothing. But hear this, though. For a bit of homework, I just want you to investigate the diaspora of the Canaanites. Just, just, just forget what you forget everything you've been told. Oh, black, this, white, that, that. Forget all that. Just look at it from a, from a fresh slate. Leaving your church affiliation behind, your camp affiliation behind, your whatever affiliation, denomination, concentration. Just leave it all behind you. Yeah? Look at it fresh. Look at where the people migrated from, migrated to, and were rumored to migrate um, after that. And, and just, just I, I guarantee you. <laughs> uh, the pieces of the puzzle will start making more sense than before but if you're going to go into it with the same preconceived ideas forget it yeah just just start fresh be a barbarian i guarantee you'll start connecting dots by the most size grace because if you search for it you will you will find it you know what you know the ways there like see can you shall find if you go onto google and you're searching for a chocolate recipe you're going to find chocolate recipes but if you're Wanting to find a chocolate recipe, but you're not looking for a chocolate recipe, you're not going to find a chocolate recipe. Yeah. So, you know, seek and ye shall find. And um, seek truth with a sincere heart by the Most High's grace, and the Most High will provide. You know? So, anyway, I hope you found all this interesting. Let me know what you found most interesting in the comment section below, and don't be frugal. <laughs> hey! And as always, people, extending. Thoughts. Robert Pershing Wadlow.